see God and how he works. That's revelation knowledge and have wisdom and understanding. Uh, and uh, I love what Dr. Thompson was saying this morning um, as I was viewing it a little bit just to get kick started. Um, he was talking about the faith pronouncements and he was saying faith has access to what God has already done in Christ. Faith has access to what has already been done in Christ. And I love that. And, um, and faith puts you in a commanding position. Everybody say, I'm in a commanding position. I'm in a commanding and, uh, position. But the revelation that I'm getting is so fabulous because he said, not only want you to have revelation about me, God the Father, and my son, but I want you to have revelation about your own personal life. Exactly. Revelation about what's happening and what I see happening for you in your personal life. Yeah. And that was such a revelation to me just to get that kind of uh, understanding that he wants me to see the revelation of the unfolding of my own personal life and our own personal that's life. Beautiful. And I thought, wow, that's, that's, those are great revelations. Um, but a couple of the things that Dr. Thompson said this morning, he said, faith must be bold enough to cause, uh, faith must be bold enough uh, yeah. and um it must be sure enough based upon the word of God. Sure. Faith yeah. must be bold enough and be sure enough because of the word of God. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Understanding puts our faith in a power position. Understanding yeah. puts our faith in a power position. Hallelujah. Wow. And this is what the Lord gave me today uh, before I got here. He said, faith already knows the devil is defeated. Faith already knows that the devil is to be. We have so many people that are fighting with the devil all the time. I know, and witchcraft. And what the devil are they fighting with the devil all the time for? When, when you already know that Jesus has defeated the devil. It's already, defeated. It's already done. Uh, faith already knows the devil is defeated and cannot touch <laughs> the inheritance that is laid up for us in Christ in our own name. Let me read that again. Faith already knows the devil is defeated and cannot touch what inheritance is laid up for us in Christ in, in entitlements in our own name, in our own account. There's nothing he can do about it now. Can you say amen? <laughs> nothing the devil can do about it now. I'm sorry, but it's just too late, devil, because it's over for you. Amen. Our inheritance is already paid for in full. Already, it's overpaid. Our inheritance is already paid for in the full. Yeah. Um, and true God faith puts demands on our inheritance in Christ. True God faith puts a demand on our inheritance in Christ. And another thing that Dr. Thompson said, faith inherits everything the Bible says. Wow. Faith inherits everything that the Bible says. And the reason why our faith doesn't operate at the highest possible level is because formalism, religion, and man-made right. philosophy have watered it down. Sure has. Right? Formalism, religion, and man-made philosophy and principles have watered it down. Uh, where does our faith belong? Our faith belongs at the throne of Christ. We're seated with him in heavenly places. Not down here on earth, laggardy and, and, and wobbling and worn out and torn and, and shorn and walking down here afraid and at the end of it. So our faith belongs seated at the right hand of God in Christ. Because that is where our high priest sits who liveth, ever liveth to make intercession for us according to the will of God. So I love that, praise God. So a lot of people are just just trying to get it done and they're, they're trying to have faith. They're trying to make it happen. If you're trying to have faith and you're trying to make it happen, you're not working out of the same uh, blueprint that I'm working out of. Because it's already done. 
Faith consents to the fact that anything that you are in need of has already been given. Woo, yeah. Woo hallelujah. Anything that you've been in need of has already been given. Like I was praying back there today. I mean, since we've been in this corona conundrum, this coronavirus, this, uh, this COVID-19, uh, this, this epidemic or pandemic or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, our confession was on the way into the pandemic, through the pandemic, and as we move out of the pandemic, we're going to have more than we had before it ever happened. Hello. And y'all, y'all can look cross-eyed at me, but that's okay because you know what? You may be doing without, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm telling Facebook. You may be doing without, but I'm not. Hello. 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 It's not based on who's in the house. Not based on who's in the room. It is not. It's not based on how many show up. Doesn't matter to me who shows up, show up, show up. If you show up, you show up. If you don't show up, you don't show up. That's like, that's your business. But the thing is, our father's business is he's already in a supply line with us. The heavens are open. We're working out of his sourcing. And we've been seeding out of his sourcing, sowing greater seeds than we ever have uh, in, in volume since this began than we ever have in the 10 years that we've been working out of this particular location. And seeing God move supernaturally to provide. And I was just praying back there. And I said, God, it doesn't matter. You are my source. You are our source. I don't care. Come hell, come high water. Who's in, who's out. I know you are for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Can you say amen? You got to get to that level. You've got to get to that level where you just are in league and you are connected and you are intimately joined to Almighty God. We've got to get to that place. You know, the kingdom of God is never shaken. Never. Kingdom of God is never shaken. It's not mistaken and it's not shaken. Can you say amen? Yeah, and I'm not shaken either. Hallelujah. The Bible says strengthen the feeble knees. Uh, but but you know what? Uh, if you are moved by what you see and moved by your emotions and moved by your intellect that's not transformed and moved by circumstances, as you've been listening to its voices, you've made the wrong choice. You need to continue to confess that God is your father. God is your father and you are his child. You are his child. God is. And we just continue to cry out through the Holy Spirit. Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Because it didn't matter if there were crowds and throngs of people around Jesus or if he was on the cross. He was trusting his heavenly father all the way through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you know, we have angels and choruses of angels around us. We have a whirlwind of glory around us. We have the spirit of life around us. We have the anointing around us. We have the presence of God, the glory of God, the power of God, the spirit of life. And it just goes whirling and whirling and whirling and whirling and whirling and whirling and whirling around. And thank God for it. We're, we're happy. We, we celebrate in it. We elevate in it. We lift ourselves in it. Well, God lifts us in it. Praise God. I mean, one with God is a majority. One with God is a majority. Everybody say majority rules. <laughs> majority rules, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I like this in Judges 18, verse 10. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures just to kind of... If you haven't gotten here yet, and if you're not focused this way, I want you to get there and get focused this way. Because this is really going to be uh, a blessing to you. Uh, describing where we are at, how we're focused, and where we're going with all this. Judges 18.10, when you go, you shall come unto a people secure, wow. to a large land, a people. People secure a large land, for God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. Glory to God. A place there is no want to anything in all the earth. That's where God's taking us. 
to a place of no want. He's our shepherd and we shall not want. If he's truly your shepherd, you're not going to be in want either. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The great shepherd of the sheep. The bishop of our soul, Jesus Christ. And I like, you know where we're going? Psalm of Solomon 2, verse 4 to 10. But I'm just going to read a phrase. It said, he brought me into the banqueting house. His banner over me is love. He brought me into the banqueting house and his banner over me is love. Everybody say, God loves me. His banner over me is love. And he's brought me to the banqueting house. The banqueting house. Banqueting house. You can have heaven on earth, I mean, all week long. I'm enjoying the presence of God and I'm banqueting with heaven and, and banqueting with the Father and enjoying the presence of the Holy Ghost and just enjoying the life that God's bringing and enjoying the transformation of the Word of God as it transforms and renews the mind and gives us a God culture and gives us a, a heavenly nomenclature. It's a glorious thing to just walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. So amazing. I love it. Um, and, uh, you know, God wants us to have the highest, the chiefest, and the best. How many believe that God wants us to have the highest, the chiefest, and the best? I mean, if you're going to believe, you might as well believe for the best, right? Why believe for second best when you can have the best? Exactly. It's you. In the book of Revelation, Jesus said he makes all things brand new. Someone asked me the other day, what, do you, what, 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 uh, what brand do you use? I said, I use brand new. Brand new. Brand new. <laughs> Spend your time allowing your mind to be converted to God's word, not according to hearsay. Oh, amen to that. Not according to the patterns of the past. Amen. Not according to what other people are saying right. and believing. You know, I, I spend time rebuking and rescinding subliminal forms yes. that come into my consciousness. That other people send me. A lot of people are sending subliminal messages to us that's trying to darken our understanding about our great wealth in Christ. And there's a lot of warfare over that. The devil is just mangling and, and is just mutilating people's minds and just cutting them off from circulation, from the glory and from heaven. And I, I spend time resisting the subliminal realm that other people and demons and fallen angels are trying to send me. I will not go there. So the Lord says, Isaiah 55, 2, it says, Why spend money on that which is not bread? And you labor on that which does not satisfy. What? God wants me to be satisfied? Wow. He wants me to be satisfied. Yeah. But that's against religion. You can't be happy. You can't be full. You can't be satisfied. You are a religious person. They don't, they, they don't go there. They can't be like that. But I'll tell you what. I don't care. You can carry religion, but I'm going to continue to smile. I'm going to continue to be happy. I'm going to be continue to be full of joy. I'm going to be glad because yeah. I'm calling on my father's word. He yeah. says, I am going to be satisfied. Yeah. He said, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Listen carefully. Open up your ears and listen carefully to me and eat. That was, it's about what we hear. Yeah. Or what we allow ourselves to hear. Yeah. Are the voices that we allow to enter into our consciousness. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That thing that we think about most of the time is what we become. That's why we got to harness our mind and harness our brain, our, harness our frontal lobe and harness our uh, cerebrum and harness our cerebellum and harness all of these uh, 
all, all of these parts, these templates of the brain, and call the mind of Christ to come in. Mind of Christ, come in. Mind of Christ, come in. Mind of Christ. Don't leave room for any other thought but the mind of Christ. Can you say praise the Lord? The ascended mind of Christ. The resurrected mind of Christ. The one that sits in heaven. The one we are seated in him in heaven with. Come and let that mind of our unity that sits in the heavens, far above all principality, power, rulers, and authority, let that mind be in us, which is also in Christ. Amen. Let us be Christed. Hallelujah. Let's have his lofty thoughts. Amen. He said, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And your soul will delight. Look at this. In the riches of food. Wow. In the richest. R-I-C-H-E-S-T of foods. The richest. Of, or, and, and another translation that says the choicest of food. Another translation that said the finest of foods. Wow. Isaiah 55, 2. Oh, I told the finest of food. Or in another translation says the finest of fair. Fair. In other words, the finest layout you can think of. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants us over meager, minor, just enough, just barely making it, and just about broke. He wants us out of that nomenclature. He wants us to get out of that realm, stay out of that realm, stay poised and positioned and anointed and appointed and approved and underwritten by Almighty God. Hallelujah. You know, and I, I like what it says here. Um, that God spoke to Solomon. He said in 1 Kings 3.13, he says, Moreover, I'll give you what you did not request. I love God bonuses, don't you? Do you love God bonuses? God always gives more than we God always gives more than we ask for, doesn't he? Moreover, I give you more than the, uh, I give you what you did not request. Riches and honor, so that during all of your days, no man in any kingdom will be equal to you. You won't have an equal. God said, I'm just going to lay that on you. Wow. Because it comes to people that don't ask for themselves and are not in it for themselves. Right. This kind of bonus from God comes from people that are working out of Matthew 6.33. Exactly Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs> Be about the Father's business. Right? Think about it. That's what Jesus, the people, people are perplexed. How did Jesus do it? Well, he did it because he was, he was working in the Father's business. He was, he was walking about doing what the Father wanted him to do. He was working the will of the Father out in his own personal life. He was here to help to build the church. Amen. He was here to outreach and win souls. He was here to bring deliverance. Yeah. He was here as a servant. Think about it. And yeah. every time he was around people that are in need, the father poured out lavishly, lavishly and abundantly more than they could ever ask or think. And he did it in a way that was just totally unfathomable. Unbelievable. Because they were in it with the right intentions. They were in it for God. Amen. And when you're in it for God, if you build God's house, God will what? Build your house. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Um, I like what it says in Ecclesiastes 3.13. It says, it, I think that other scripture was, uh, well, let me move up here. What was it? Yeah, it was 1 Kings 3.13. Now we're going to, now we're going to Ecclesiastes uh, uh, 3.13. And it says, uh, it says, and also that every man should eat and drink and find satisfaction in all of his labor. Every man should eat and drink and find satisfaction in his labor. This is the gift of God. God doesn't want us in puberty. God doesn't want us in want. God doesn't want us in dead end uh, uh, soliloquies. God doesn't want us in ruination and, and he doesn't want us living in that kind of a unsatisfied status drink and find satisfaction in your labor this is the gift of god right. that every man every man every man should eat and drink find satisfaction in all his labor everybody say i've got favor, I've got favor and i live in god's 
labor. I, I work for God. Everybody say, I work for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Ecclesiastes 6.2 says, God gives a man riches and wealth and honor. God gives a man riches, wealth, and honor so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. What? What? Are you what? Are you kidding me? That, that's against the Bible. That's blasphemy. That can't possibly be. Oh, no. That's going to wreck my theology. Ecclesiastes 6.2, God gives every man riches, wealth, and honor so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. My God, riches and wealth? Yeah. <laughs> riches, honor, and wealth. Are you kidding? <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And, and um, you know, he works it around again. Ecclesiastes 5.19, furthermore, God has given riches and wealth to every man, and he has enabled him to enjoy them. Wow. Enjoyment. You mean I can enjoy life? Yes. He has enabled him to enjoy them, to accept his lot, to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. This is our lot in life, to be able to enjoy the things that God brings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for taking the lid off. Thank you for taking the load off. Thank you for taking the burden off our shoulders and from around our neck. Thank you, Lord, for coming here and making it clear. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And we can revere your name now. You're exalted. You're lifted. You're elevated. We celebrate you for a God that loves us like that. And a God that lavishes like that. A God that gives like that. A God that wants us to have the kind of life that he's describing here. We have to praise his holy name. Hallelujah forevermore. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I love it. You know, it says in 2 Chronicles 9, 22, so King Solomon surpassed all the kings of, of the earth in riches, but also another thing he adds, and wisdom. Wisdom. How I many know wisdom is a principal thing? Without wisdom, we wouldn't know these things. Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from the mouth of the Son of God, 1 Corinthians 1, 30. Wisdom comes from the mouth of the Son of God. Hallelujah. All word in the Bible came from the mouth of the Son of God. Um, look what it says in 1 Chronicles 29, 12. It, it, it says, both riches and honor come from you. Where, does it, where do riches and honor come from? They come from God. Both riches and honor come from you. And you are ruler over all. Talking about God the Father. You are ruler over all. Power and might are in your hand. And it is in your hand to exalt and to give strength to all. Yes. To exalt and give strength to all. Yes. Strength is very important in life. Yes. You got to have power. You have to have strength. You have to have surge. You have to have momentum. You have to have fire. You have to have zeal. You have to have compunction. You have to have an unction. You have to have a force. Greater than the forces that exerted in this world. To be able to break through the bastions of hell. And break through the cells of the of the secular and break through the minds of the unconverted. You've got to have power to press through and to get through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And God gives it. God can give it. God disperses it. God dispatches it. God dispenses it to those that want to receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love it. Uh, it gets me excited if you haven't noticed. Um, amen, amen, amen. You know, the Old Testament, they got into a realm of, of riches and wealth that uh, the New Testament people haven't even touched. But yet it says in Hebrews that the Old Covenant, in comparison to the New Covenant, it's as though the Old Covenant didn't exist because of the, of the superiorness of the glory that's tied to the New Covenant. Read the Bible for yourself. It says it in Hebrews. It says that the Old Testament covenant's the glory that fadeth. We looked upon the face of Moses, it faded. But in Christ, it's an ever-existing, uh, non-fading glory. Yeah. Jesus told Solomon. Yeah. Or Jesus told the people, excuse me. He, he, told, he told the people, he says, greater than Solomon is here. 
And he said, one lily is arrayed with more glory than all of Solomon's kingdom. One lily, it neither toils nor spins. It neither toils nor spins. We have a lot of people that are just spinning around, just spinning around like a, like a dreidel, going around and around and toiling. I mean, they're, they're in all kinds of tribulation. We've got to get to the place where we just know that it's already done. It's already been given. It's already been handled. Hallelujah. Amen. It's already taken care. Everybody say, it's already taken care of. Everybody give God some praise. Say, it's already taken care of. And see, God doesn't mind. God doesn't mind people uh, praying for deliverance. He wants us to pray for deliverance. He wants us to us to get out of the indemnity and all of the all the all of the enclosures that we find ourselves he doesn't want us to stay there and he's, he's generous and very willing to get us out of there right yes, sir. Yes, sir. but he doesn't want us to make it a a continuous practice to go into bondage he says stand fast in the liberty wherewith you're called Look what he says in Isaiah 25, verse 4. He says, for you have been a refuge for the poor, a stronghold for the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat, and from the breath of the ruthless that's like rain pelting against a wall. Isaiah 25, 4. How many of you felt that expression of the enemy just pelting your wall? I mean, ruthlessly pelting your wall. But yet God allows a wall to stand up and not fall. Can you say amen? amen brother. And then you experience in this engagement in, in Isaiah 25, 4, the refuge that God gives you from the storms of life. You, you experience it. You see it. You begin to understand it. You begin to know it. You begin to perceive it, right? And then you see the stronghold show up. To help defend the needy in distress, you begin to uh, become aware that there is a tremendous stronghold in God around you that, that will uh, deliver you from all the assailments of hell and the enemy. And you, you become acquainted with a refuge when you're in poverty, when, you, when you're up against it financially, when you're up against it uh, in, your, in your finance, against, in, up against it in your job, and up against it in the world in which you live, and up against it in your household, and your family, and up against it in so many different ways, he becomes your refuge. Yes, he, he wants to deliver us out of all of those things, but in delivering us out of them, he wants us to take note that there's always a stronghold. That there's always a refuge. That there's always shade from the heat. That there's always a wall standing up. And he wants us to walk in that mindset to know that we're covered. Everything is covered. Everything is enclosed in God's provision and God's protection. And God aligns himself and assigns himself to make sure that we're in that kind of life, in that kind of protocol. That we, that, and, and to know that we have that estate that we work out of and live out of. And that we don't always have to go down when things are trying to bring us down. We don't always have to be broke when things are trying to break us. We don't always have to uh, be worn out and torn and shorn when we're oppressed with the heat of the enemy. We don't always have to, to be hiding behind the wall when the breath of the ruthless is breathing because God has ways and means whereby he can take us. And, 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 and just like a plane when it's going through a, a battle and a storm and winds in the air, they can just mount up and gain altitude and get right out of that storm. Or drop low and get out of the There are ways to navigate out of things where you don't have to go into bondage again. Can you say amen? There are ways and means that you learn as you go with God. As, he, as you begin to see him uncover himself and show you who he is. You have a, an, an amalgamation with that. And, and you have a formation of that in your character. So when these things come and these things try to fight and these things try to assail. They won't even move you. Hallelujah. They won't even move you. Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo, glory. Yes, Lord. That's really good. Oh, I feel that. No, 
I feel that because, I, you know, woo, thank you, Jesus. I feel the fire of God on that. Um, but look what he says in Second Chronicles 9.27. I got to end this pretty quick. From Second Chronicles 9.27, the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. Cedar as abundant as sycamore in the foothills. You know, I quoted this scripture in an audio link that I sent out. If you want to get on our audio list, go ahead and just inbox me and put in your name and your cell phone number. And I'll, I'll put you on the audio list and I'll send you some uh, private text having to do with th these kind of things that I'm teaching now. But um, in First Chronicles uh, 927, I, I quoted that in a in a audio on a Friday. And on a Saturday, I got a phone call from a lady, and she said, I want you to come and meet us at the hotel. We got over there. She laid, laid on me about, um, how many thousands of dollars of silver was that? $5,000 worth of silver? She said, God told me to give you a Sabbath offering. And silver came in, and I just quoted the scripture the day before, and she didn't even know it. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. Hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles 1.15, and it says, The king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones. King made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. wow. It's a common thing for God to lavish things upon you. Can you say amen? When you serve him and when you witness for him and when you live for him. Can you say yeah. amen? Serve him. Live for him. Witness for him. Serve him. Live for him. Witness for him. These kinds of things, these overtures will come your way. Can you say yeah. praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 32, 23, many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem to, and, pres and presents to King Hezekiah of Judah, so that he was also magnified in the sight of all the nations from henceforth. Even the nations round about him were marveling at all of the flow of gifts and all of the flow of things that were coming into the hands of Hezekiah, the presence and all of the unbelievable things that were coming to his hands. The nations were taking notice. Right. And... Um, you know, one scripture I want to pinhole here, just to pinhole the scripture, we'll move on and try to finish this up quick, but except the Lord builds the house. Come on, brother. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. I'm going to send out an audio tomorrow. It's only 20 minutes. But I talk about vanity and talk about what that means in terms of a lack of prosperity. I'm going to send that out tomorrow. Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman uh, waketh but in vain. How many know that we don't want to be in vain? We don't want our lives to be in vain. But we want our lives to be productive. And we want our lives to be blessed. And we want our lives to be fruitful. And we want our lives to be active and about the Father's business. And I believe it's happening. Can you say amen? Uh, in Second Chronicles 18.1, it says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. If God is so against prosperity, how come he's got all these scriptures one after another, after another, after another, that I'm reading to you today? How in the world could anybody in their right mind fight against prosperity? In my opinion, they're blaspheming God. Because that's part of God's nature. God is rich. God is rich. You can't count. You can't put zeros at the end of what he's worth. It's impossible to put the zeros behind what God is worth. It's impossible. Beyond measure, Beyond measure yes. Um, I like what it says in 2 Chronicles 17, 5. It says, therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. All Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents. He had riches and honor in abundance. 
First Kings 2, uh, 4, verse 21 and 24, Solomon reigned over all the king over all of the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines under the border of Egypt. He had a broad spectrum. And they brought presents and they served Solomon. Look at this. All the days of his life. Can I say that? All the days of his life. It was said of Abraham that God blessed him in all things. When he was older, it says, and God blessed him in all things. All the way through your life, you can expect the, the lavishing, the giving, the giftings, the presence. You can expect the good things of God to come rolling in. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And for God to continue to broaden your life in terms of its witness to the people around you. Glory to God. You know, Deuteronomy 28, 12, verse 12 and 44. But in this one phrase, the Lord open up unto thee his good treasure. The Lord shall open up unto thee his good treasure. You know, Proverbs 22 to 7 says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rule over the poor. How many know that God said he made you the head and not the tail? Right. Above only and not what beneath. Yeah. See, this is what God's doing. And if you're in seed sowing, if you're like me and if you're, you're doing the right thing, you're, you're, you're tithing, you're giving uh, offerings you're, you're in seed time and harvest and, and there's a lot of messages if you go to Steve COI Stephen COIA Sterling on YouTube you'll find like 150 messages there now that teach about seed time and harvest and these types of things how to how to move in God's provisional plan of prosperity I, I mean it'll roll out for you it'll become it'll put money in your pocket it will put money in your pocket. I told someone the other day, I went, I was in a cellular place and he was quizzing me about my cell phone and about what I did. And I told him what I did. And uh, he said, really? And I told him to go to YouTube and told him to go to Stephen Coy Sterling YouTube. And I said, it will put money in your pocket. He looked at me. He's like, wow, I think I'll do that. <laughs> That's what the word does. I mean, I, it, the work does. I mean, it came to Dallas for almost 18 years ago, and I've been here without a job. But just doing God's work and doing God's will and working in faith and out of faith. I've been here for 18 years and every bill is paid. Amen. I came here on a borrowed credit card with enough money in my pocket to buy a cup of coffee. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I sown seeds as large as $10,000. And I came here from nowhere. If you can find somebody that came from nowhere and get something, you need to listen to that person. Came out of nowhere and just, and still exists and still subsists and still flows and still goes and still operates. You found something significant. Leviticus 26, 4 says, I'll give you your rains in their season. The land will yield its produce. Everybody say, my land. My land will yield its produce. The trees of the field will yield their fruit. Will yield their fruit. How did everybody say, my seed is blessed. Say it again. My seed is blessed. Hallelujah. Why do I say that? Well, Galatians 3.29, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Everybody say, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. Not just an heir in the natural, but I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Do you know what that means? You talk about heirs. You know what I mean? I mean, wealthy heirs, people that have pedigree, people that have trust funds set up for them. I mean, even, even these billionaires give cats and uh, heirs. They make them heirs now. Cats and, and, and pets. They leave, they leave, they leave a billion dollars to pets. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. He owns everything. Amen. He created the universe. Amen. All things are put into his hands. Amen. He holds all things together with his word. Can you say amen? amen. All things are held together by his word. Amen. His word is law. 
Hallelujah. I like this in 1 Peter 1, 4. Uh, we've obtained an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away. We've obtained inheritance, imperishable, undefiled, that will not fade away. It's reserved there for us in heaven right now. Reserved. Every one of us has our name on an account in heaven. And it's connected to the endless stream of riches in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3, we will be blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything starts in the spirit world and manifests in the natural world. So, man, I mean, when you sow, when you seed, when you give, you know what it do? You stir up. You stir up a literal tornado. You stir up a volcanic. You stir up a, a, an avalanche of blessings. Your seed just causes a whirlwind effect because it came from heaven and God spoke to you and impressed you to give. And when you do that, you stir heaven up. Wow. And then and, and heaven stirs the earth up. Can you say amen? Wow. amen? Glory to God that God puts his blessing on the seed. He puts his blessing on the earth. He puts his blessing on the growth from that seed. He puts the blessing on the heavens and makes sure that seed is taken care of. He puts his blessing on the cycle of that seed and blesses you in a most amazing, phenomenal way. Come on, give God some praise. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. And yes, he will. And yes, he can. Praise God. Well, I want to end it there. That's a good place. Uh, like Leroy Thompson, Dr. Thompson says, it's a good jumping off point. You know, um, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you get to a point where you don't pray anymore. For, you just don't pray anymore for money. No, no, you're not supposed to pray. For money. You just thank God for it, yeah. and, and 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 you put in a request to say, you know what, God, um, or just don't even have to put in a request. Just put your head up and say, thank you, Lord, for that harvest because I sowed that specific seed. Thank you for that unlimited harvest that's coming yeah. in. You just call it all in. Call it all. Just call it down. Call it in. And, and just Amen. speak and it'll happen. Amen. Somebody.